Hi everyone. Uh, yeah, so here's what's going on today. <laughs> I'm um, every day for the past few days I've been getting out of bed doing something. I'm proud of myself for taking a shower. And <laughs> proud of myself for just brushing my teeth. So now I'm going to brush my teeth every day. <laughs> And today I thought about maybe cleaning off my dresser. There's a lot of empty water bottles up there and just trying to get up and do something. It's hard to because it's really cold outside and, you know, I have like three vehicles and they're all broken down. <laughs> it's just that I, you know, I had so much going on in my home that I could never focus on, you know, getting the car fixed was the last of my priorities. But anyway... I just, uh, I still feel so withdrawn and, and not that great because it's just hard, you know, and I'm trying to face everything, but it wasn't until uh, yesterday that I realized that my son's really gone. He's not coming back. I kept telling myself that all the signs that I got and everything were all part of a big plot. We're all part of this big, these people that, you know, were giving my son a million dollars to fake his death and they knew how to do things like, you know, like the signs that I got. I felt like they, I felt like, well, maybe they were coming from these people. <laughs> I mean, you know, your mind just goes all over the place. And I know that my videos have been kind of crazy too. And, you know, like an early video where I wanted to kill myself. And, you know, you, you don't know how you feel until you go through it. So I'm not crazy. I'm not, uh, you know, lost my mind, but I had moments of that non being being in non reality so like i said yes you know, at the end of the day i gotta reel myself in but um it's hard because i went to the grocery store and that was the hardest thing i couldn't believe how hard that was it got to a point where going to that grocery store was harder than looking at my son's mountain dew in the other room because it hit me that i would never be doing this stuff again i'll never be buying those hot chips or never be buying his lemonade and the ramen noodles and all the things he liked every aisle there was something that my son ate of course you know and I was started hyperventilating and I had to sit down and I just wanted to hurry out of there and then I thought geez I, the way I'm rushing and acting they probably think I'm stealing something <laughs> but I didn't I'm not gonna I don't do that but the thing is is like you know it was really scary for me and I just lost my breath you know and it was really hard. That was a really hard thing to do. And then when I got home, I just realized that, you know, it's just, I'm not living life. I'm just existing still. And it's been seven weeks, but it took me seven weeks to realize that this isn't a prank. And I just, uh, that's how much you can love, love somebody, you know, that you don't want to believe it. So I just want you guys to know that, you know, and then I just like, every time I try to take a step forward, I keep seeing all these people saying, you know, oh, they're still grieving. And, you know, so I got to stop looking at that stuff. I got to stop looking at, you know, I always thought watching other people's grief would be helpful to me. But it's not. You know, it just it just puts me back in that place. It throws me back, making me realize that I, I'm, you know, grieving all that more. And I can't do life anymore. So I got to stop looking at that and do me and wear my own ruby slippers and Stop looking at all that grief stuff and, and try to take a deep breath and tomorrow's another day. All right, anyway, this video's getting long. I just wanted to tell you guys that stuff and we'll talk to you tomorrow.